Before we get started rendering, we need to have a scene open. Let's go ahead and open up Chapter 6 Facade 03.max. Click on the Application button. Open. Navigate to the Chapter 6 subdirectory. And open the file Chapter 6 Facade 03.max. This file is an animated file of the front of one of the buildings of our final production. We currently have the Camera 1 viewport highlighted. If it's not, right-click in it to activate it. In the main toolbar, click on Render Setup. Now, in Time Output, we don't want to render just a single frame. In most cases, we would choose the Active Time segment. Currently, the Active Time segment goes from frame 0 to frame 100. You can also enter a range of frames, say 50 to 75, if that's what you need to render. And you can type in to render specific frames. This can be helpful if you're rendering and you realize that one or two of your frames of a rendering are missing or you want to render several different ranges at the same time. You choose these options by selecting the radio button for that option. Generally though, you'd be rendering the active time segment. We've left this scene at HDTV format for the output. In this format, we can render as high as 1920 by 1080 pixel resolution. A more common resolution for HDTV is the 1280 by 720 resolution. You can also enter a custom value in here. Go ahead and let's highlight the width entry. Type in 640. That will give us a 640 pixel horizontally rendered image. Then press enter to accept the value. What you'll notice is that it automatically sets the height to 360. Using this preset for HDTV format maintains a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. If you look at the image aspect ratio for 3ds Max, you'll notice that the image aspect is 1.77777 on for infinity. This is the image aspect that 3ds Max uses to determine the aspect ratio of your output. It's the horizontal to vertical aspect ratio. We also discussed the pixel aspect ratio of an image. Using the HDTV output size format, it's automatically set to a value of 1. This maintains a square pixel. Click on the drop down for the output size options and let's take a look at some of the other formats available. If we look down the list, you'll see an NTSC D1 option. This option is ideal if you're creating DVDs or broadcast video. Go ahead and select that option. Now we could be going out to videotape and here we have the image resolutions that we can choose from. You'll notice that it defaults to the 720 by 486 pixel resolution. Now take a look in the pixel aspect ratio and notice that it's set to a value of 0.9. This means that the pixels are not square, they're rectangular. The reason why this needs to occur is because the reformatting that the image goes through when it's displayed on a standard television. Remember, check with your client beforehand and find out what formats they're going to be delivering their animation in. That way there's no confusion about what image format and resolution you need to render. And when you're doing this in the business world, it saves you time and it saves you money. Let's go back in the drop-down list and set the option to Custom. This allows us to enter any resolution that you need to render without any limitations. However, it's important to understand that rendering to a non-standard resolution may not work in all circumstances. And again, you always want to be aware of what your final output requirements are. 